Shirley Burns and Ian Puller now take up the grammar school story. Members from those times no doubt recall having to prepare the hall for this major undertaking. Firstly by having to remove what was required from the incinerator. For example, spotlights and stage lights had to be disconnected and taken down, as did the lighting bar in which many of the lights were mounted. All these components had then to be transported to IWGS along with a variety of drama boxes, various props such as furniture, bottles, crockery, cushions, paintings, etc which had to be stored out of sight backstage, but in such a fashion that they could be readily moved on stage when required for a particular play. In those days, it was our policy to provide furniture for visiting groups. As we never knew exactly what table or chair they might need, we invariably set off for the grammar school with Clive Beale's fruit truck piled to the gunnels with furniture, which we then stacked in the wings, making it very difficult for the actors to manoeuvre around. Hanging the ILT lighting bar and fixing the lights there too was always something of a worry. Our electrical experts, often working late into the night, did marvellous work and had everything in place operating satisfactorily for each production. The festival took place over three days of the Queen's birthday weekend in June and everyone involved in the preparations was really pushed for time, much of the work having to be carried out on Friday night and Saturday morning and many of our members went short of sleep and functioned on adrenaline only, it seemed. Not only did we bring our own gear, but we had to arrange for a three-phase power connection to be draped up the stairs from the dressing rooms below and to hire an intercom system and heaters to combat the bitter June weather. Once the plays had all been presented and adjudicated and all the prize winners allotted their trophies, etc., everything which had been introduced into the hall for the performances had to be removed and the place cleaned up. So, away went the props, down came the lights and lighting bar, and all the accoutrements from the incinerator had to be returned there and everything had to be replaced from whence it had come. By the Monday evening of that long weekend. So it was no wonder that year after year, Helen and I finished up at Jeff and Shirley's home in a state of sheer exhaustion for them to resuscitate us with a welcome meal as we reflected on the weekend's events. Great changes occurred in early grammar school days, changes which in many ways altered the focus of our festivals. The guiding star was a young Irishman by the name of Sam Robinson. Sam had attended drama festivals in his homeland and was aware that they could be so much more than just a competition. He directed our festivals in 1972 74 and 75. The competition was held at IGGS, but it was the daytime activities at the incinerator that were to introduce the critically important social element, which has become such a standout feature of ILT festivals ever since. Ian and I worked very closely with Sam, with Ian being his stage manager and me festival secretary. And we were inspired by his ideas and the outcomes they offered. Adjudicators were required, in addition to their main responsibility, to conduct a workshop in their field of expertise. These were held mostly at the incinerator on Sunday mornings, especially once our Jean Pratt building was erected in 1982. During the grammar school years, it was our custom to have workshops conducted by the adjudicators of the time. Uh, these workshops were absolutely fascinating. They were all different um, and once again it helped with the camaraderie with groups because we all combined together for those workshops. Tony Erhardt tells of a 1983 experience with Tony Shadforth's YT's production City vs Country. My first experience probably would have been in 1983. Um, I'd just not long joined Young Theatricals and um, we had a director come in from uh, Royal Queensland Theatre Company, um, Tony, and it was uh, a play that we workshopped in rehearsals. Uh, it was no script to the base, it was just a, an outline of a plot that we had which is a, a gangster sort of style bar situation which ended up in an all-in brawl at the end of it, um, completely improvised the whole play and we ended up winning the section for the youth with it. 
Um, then when we came to the workshop on the Sunday, which back then we had Sunday workshops, uh, Duncan Wass, who was the adjudicator at the time, did a full workshop on improvisation, which was brilliant. A great story is told by Lorraine Vance in relation to two-time adjudicator, Glyn Davies. And the adjudicator workshops were another highlight of our stay, except on one occasion when we heard it would be a Shakespearean workshop. The kids were not impressed, but what a surprise they were in for when Glyn Davis presented an exciting, humorous, participatory and invaluable learning experience. We talked about it for years. Of equal importance to the workshops, perhaps greater for some, were the Sunday lunches and barbecues, which have continued to the present day. Another custom was a luncheon in the theatre grounds. We made quite a, a lot of effort with and people just loved once again that getting together. Everyone cooked their favourite meal and off we went. They of course then grew into the barbecues which we do now. I hate to think how many sausages I would have barbecued over the years. But for all that, the festival barbecue on the Sunday was a most important part of the festival. Originally, we built a barbecue up on the hill, which was later excavated for the current kitchens, outside which we can now barbecue on our own gas heater. But the most important thing is that that barbecue is a focus for the, for the social part of the festival. Oh, the barbecues were lots of fun as a kid. Again, the same group of people could hang out. And we used to go up to Queen's Park. And I was nine or ten, so I thought that was a long way away. And those stairs up the back of the theatre were so huge, we thought we were really going off to the wilds of Africa. It, that, was, that was my event for the year. There were great traditions attached to these lunchtime functions. Ian recounts Ron Shepherd's memory. For many years, during the 1970s and 80s, Ron Shepherd operated lighting and sound at our annual drama festivals. One of his fondest memories, however, is the Fairy Ring. On the Sunday morning, the festival adjudicator would ad conduct a workshop at the Incinerator Theatre for actors and directors. A group of partners of the said actors, directors, found a far more salubrious occupation for their time, gathering on the grassed area at the upper level of the garden with a flagon or two of what Ron remembers to be rather rough red. An enjoyable time of conversation and general merriment ensued in what was eventually christened Fairy Ring. Others joined in the fun and the children happily played. Participants rejoined the thespians for a relaxing barbecue lunch before returning to the IGGS for the afternoon session where hopefully no terribly complicated technical requirements would be presented to the well-lubricated crew. However, perhaps just occasionally, some may have been too well-lubricated. Uh, I was about 19 and um, I'd asked to help out backstage. I turned up the first night and it wasn't too bad, I was working backstage with them. The second uh, performance I turned up for though, the lighting and sound guy hadn't shown. And um, I was told that I'm working the lighting and sound desk because it's just myself and the stage manager and he had to do the stage managing. And I'm like, I've got no idea how to operate a lighting and sound desk. But uh, they gave me a bit of brief explanation and after that I was reasonably good at it. So that was my first experience of doing both at the same time. 